So today we're going to look at uh, the essential tools that you need for uh, malware analysis career or if you're going into interview, that kind of stuff. Um, these are the, the three tools that you need to be intimately familiar with. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Uh, you, you have to know your way around these tools. And the first one is a disassembler. Uh, the, the corporate gold standard for disassembly is IDA Pro. Uh, the only issue with IDA Pro is, is that it's really expensive. It's about $5,000 per license, and that includes all of their API stuff, their decompilers, all of that. But <clears throat> if you want to use it at home, um, unless you have you know a few grand to fork over, uh, you're going to be stuck with their free version. Now their free version used to suck. It used to be IDA based on IDA 5, I think. And it looked like a bad GUI program from the 90s. But recently they've updated to IDA 7, and it's much better. Um, it includes most of their features. Uh, their, their free version doesn't include their Python API or anything like that. But it does include quite a bit of stuff. Um, so for, for getting your, your feet wet, <clears throat> for understanding the debugger and its, its keybinds and its features and, and all of that stuff, it's great. Um, so you can just throw, throw uh, this is the full version, but you know the, the free version looks very similar to this. So you just throw a, throw a binary in there, tell it you want to you know, go ahead and analyze it, it'll open it up, and you're good to go. Now as soon as it opens up, uh, one of the key features you need to know about is graph view versus linear view. Um, so you see here that we have a graph overview on the left hand side, that gives you an overview of the assembly that you're looking at and the current function that you're in, so in this case main. And if you want to look at just linear disassembly, you just hit the spacebar and now you're in linear mode and, and you can, you know, do what you need to do there. Um, preference really doesn't matter whatever you are used to looking at um, personally I like the the graph view if I'm looking for stuff really fast because it's it's really easy to find things visually if you're looking for more in-depth things um, or hidden things even you know sometimes you go to the to the linear view um, it's all preference uh, the the next part you need to know about in Ida is the options in general um, by default, I have line prefixes turned on. Line prefixes are addresses. So you notice that the addresses just went away and now we have straight um, just assembly. And if we go into linear mode, you can see the addresses again. But if you're in graph, by default, it doesn't show them. So um, you need to know where this option is. That's just up in general, line prefixes. Bam, it'll show you, show you the addresses. Um, the next part is um, about rebasing binaries. So by default on most platforms um, the binaries are going to have ASLR turned on meaning that every time you launch them they're going to be loaded at a different address. They're not going to be a static address every time. So when you're debugging and looking in IDA at the same time the addresses you see in the binary aren't going to be the same that you see in memory. Um, there's a few ways around that. You could tell the binary that you don't want it to load dynamically at dynamic addresses or you can come into IDA and rebase the, the program to whatever base it was loaded at in memory. Um, and you do that by coming down to segments and rebase program and then you give it the base that it was loaded at. And now it will shift all of these addresses that you see on screen to, to match those that you find in memory. So you can match up what you're seeing in the debugger to IDA. That's another quick tip for Ida. Um, another tip is um, if you see anything and you're curious about hey what this function what, what calls this function where does what leads into it you can always hit X and that will show you any X refs that lead to that function or piece of data and you can just keep following that back and back until you find you know this is the entry point of something or this is where the data gets input and I can you know start tracing things from there so spacebar yep uh, X for xrefs and being able to rebase the program um, those are pretty big things um, another thing you want to be used to is looking at the exports of a program um, in other disassemblers they don't always go to the main or the start of the 
of the program. They just kind of dump you at the head of the of the binary. And I've seen a lot of people in interviews struggle because they're not used to using other disassemblers. Um, they don't know how to find main or start. Um, Ida does it for you. It automatically opens up in 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 main. But for other ones, it does not. Um, if you wanted to find it manually in Ida, you just go to exports and then start. Start will lead you to the start of the program, and you follow it down, 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 and then you find main, you can go into main. You can also just search over on the function list, main, and you can find main. Uh, so Ida makes it pretty pretty easy, um, not, not too much trouble there. Uh, the other portion of Ida you need to be familiar with, if you're going to use it, is they have built-in debugger stubs, so you can play around with these to actually launch the program and not use a, a another debugger. So running Ida and a, a separate debugger together can be a little clumsy if you don't have a lot of monitor space. So Ida does have built-in debuggers that you can launch various things with. Uh, another feature of Ida that you'll only be able to use in the full version is what's called Ida Python. Ida Python, uh, Ida has a full API interface um, with a whole bunch of functionality. You pretty much do everything, everything and anything you want in, in Ida um, through Python. Uh, for instance, if I want to list uh, every head of a program or uh, every head within this program can go ahead and run this and then I output every single head of a program now you may be asking what's a head a head is simply a line of assembly that it's analyzed so this is a head this is a head 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 uh, you can do the same thing for functions, it will print out all the functions that it finds. So that's just super simple um, example of Ida Python. There's so many things you can do. The the API is not the easiest to look at because they haven't documented it. Great, it's hard to find things. But once you actually get some of this down and together, like your your analysis of programs can go through the roof. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. So, Ida, um, again, not free. License is, is very expensive, but it is the corporate standard. And if you start working anywhere, you you need to be familiar with Ida. Especially these, you know, just these simple things like going to linear disassembly or finding XRefs or rebasing a program or displaying addresses, things like that. And all of these things you can learn from the, the free version. You won't be able to use Ida Python. But you can get familiar with pretty much all the other functionality. Um, the only other portion that um, uh, the paid version of Ida has is a decompiler. And a decompiler, all that does is, um, let me see here. Ah, I didn't drag it on the right one. Uh, decompiler will take the assembly and turn it into pseudo source uh, so you can kind of view it in C. Um, and I can show you that in the next uh, dissimilar we look at. But that was Ida. Uh, very important to learn, uh, be familiar with, and practice with. Uh, the next one is Ghidra. Ghidra was a dissimilar released by the NSA uh, for free. And it is uh, really powerful. Um, it has a robust API, like Ida Python, that you can do all sorts of stuff. And, you know, doesn't cost anything. Um, yeah, um, just a really big API that it takes a while to learn, but you can you can definitely do it. So Ghidra, when you open it up, it looks like this. You need to create a project and then drag in the binary. As soon as you drag in the binary, then you can open up the binary. And Ghidra will go ahead and open up. Yeah, here we go. And Kidra is uh, primarily written in Java, so it is kind of slow. Um, that's a drawback of it. Um, but you see here, as soon as we open up the binary, we're dumped out at the head of the program. 
Um, and this is things I've seen str uh, candidates struggle with is that, all right, well, it's open, but why, you know, where's, where's Maine, where's Start, where's all that stuff? Um, and you can find that over here in the symbol tree and the exports. Uh, you can find the entry of the program. You can, you know, scroll down. So you can scroll down. You can find the the entry, the the, the the function that goes into before it exits that entry routine, and then here we go. And this is this is what we have. Now the default um, view for Gijra is this. It has a a linear disassembly view and a decompilation view. So no matter what you click into, it goes ahead and decompiles it for you. Gijra's decompiler is really good. Um, it, in my opinion, it's it's better than Ida's in in some sense. And, and it's free, so you can get used to seeing, you know, pseudo source decompiled assembly, and that, that will get you ready for, you know, when you use full versions of IDA. Um, but the the graph view, you actually have to go into. You can't hit, <coughs> can't hit spacebar like you can in IDA. You actually have to come in here, up here, and hit display function graph. And as soon as you do that, it opens up this graph. It's a little slow, um, but this is the this is the function graph, and you can zoom into it, go around. They try and do a pretty good job of, of showing you, you know, where jumps go for true conditions and false conditions, just like Ida. But um, it, it's just a little slower. It's a little clunkier the way they have it have it laid out. It's not as fluid to to move around in. Um, but I'm sure with some practice, um, you know, you can get pretty quick at it. Um, so, so going into interviews and stuff. Um, Definitely be familiar with a disassembler, either one of these two. There are some other ones out there, specifically um, Binary Ninja. Binary Ninja has free trials for disassembling things for like 25 minutes. Um, and then they have a paid version. They're, um, they, they also have a, a pretty hefty API and, and their, the roots of their company and stuff lend Binary Ninja very well to patching binaries and, and things like that and cracking things. Um, it's a great piece of software, but it's really not a, a standard. So if you if you go into interview somewhere, um, they they know that Ida is you know really expensive and that you probably don't have a lot of experience on that, but they will expect you to have experience on Ida free. And specifically now that NSA has released Ghidra, <clears throat> a lot of them will give you the choice. You know, are you are you familiar with Ida or are you familiar with Ghidra? And most places are not going to offer you, you know, are you familiar with Binary Ninja? Are you familiar with Radar? Radar is a is an interesting choice. Um, it's free. There's a lot of good GUI tools that uh, you can use to get it to look more like Ida and Ghidra. Um, but it, it's Ida and Ghidra are more in their, a class of their own. Um, Radar's fine, but you're really not going to use it as like a corporate standard. So be very familiar with Ida and Ghidra. Uh, the next thing you need to be familiar with is some sort of debugger. If you're going in for malware analysis, I would highly suggest X64 debug. That's this guy here. I say that's weird, it's not launching. Alright, so the, the executable that I was dropping in there is 32 bit, not 64 bit. So X64 debug has a 32 bit debugger as well as 64 bit. Um, so, yeah, as soon as you open it up, uh, this is you know your debug view. It's, it's a great program. Uh, this is very specific to Windows and more specifically like Windows malware because you know you're doing user land debugging and, and things like that. Um, but it's great for laying out the memory. You can see the memory, call stacks, uh, structure exception handler change. Um, you can see any kind of loaded libraries, DLLs, and uh, search for symbols in them. Uh, yeah, any, any kind of thread states that are running. Uh, Snowman is a decompiler is an open source decompiler that they include with this so if you're curious about you know what does what does this code look like um, should be a way decompile selection so you can highlight some uh, assembly code and then send it over to snowman and snowman will give you the pseudo source of kind of what you were looking at if, if you're if you're confused by the code by the assembly then you can pump it out to the pseudo source and get a rough idea of Oh, okay, well this is what it would look like in C. So that's super helpful. 
super helpful to have that in a debugger right away. So if you just have questions about uh, you know a little bit of assembly, then it can go ahead and do that for you. Um, so for, for malware specifically, x64 debug is a great one to know. Other than x64 debug, uh, if you're doing low level Windows debugging, you want to be very familiar with WinDebug. WinDebug is part of um, the development kit for Windows. Um, yeah, and any any kind of kernel debugging or like low level stuff, you're going to want to be very familiar with WinDebug. As a catch all for debuggers, you want to be familiar with GDB. GDB is uh, kind of a universal debugger, mainly used on, on Unix systems, but can be used on other systems as well. And yeah, a anywhere you go, they're going to want you to know GDB commands and how to how to debug programs through GDB and attach and, and dump memory and all that. So be very familiar with some sort of disassembler, either IDA or Ghidra, and be familiar with a debugger depending on what platform you're going for. For malware analysis, again, x64 debug. It's fantastic to be able to know how to debug programs in that, but it's Windows specific. So a catch-all debugger would be GDB, and that would that's going to get you in most places is, is knowing GDB and how to do that, and even writing like GDB scripts and things it is, is even more of a bonus. Um, yeah. And other than that, all of the all of the other tools that you see on the desktop here, you know, DNSpy and P Studio and Cheat Engine and, and all of these things, those are all supplementary tools. So you'll 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 come into contact with those as your career progresses, or if you're ma analyzing malware on your own, that that type of stuff, you'll you'll start to use these types of tools. Um, down here, I have a whole bunch of just little shortcuts leading to a whole bunch of other tools again these are all supplementary you'll you'll encounter them at some point but the, the bread and butter that you need to be really 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 familiar with some sort of disassembler either a Ghidra and some sort of debugger x64 debug but GDB as a catch-all for for Linux MIPS ARM uh, Windows like it, every you can use GDB on absolutely everything so as long as you have a firm grasp in those tools, your interview process should go fairly well. So yeah, if you all have any questions about this video or anything else, go ahead and hit us up at ringzerolabs.com.